Hello, hi, good afternoon. So my name is Terence Lim. Um, I am the founder and founder and part of the board member of Stockfish Bombing Malaysia. So what we do is that uh, we use uh, technology or to prevent or try to stop fish bombing. Uh, our equipment that we have are in, uh, installed in the water in the sea. At the moment, our area of focus is in Samporna. Uh, we have you use hydrophones that is in the water listening to fish bomb. So when a fish bomb is detected, if we have enough hydrophones within the area, we can triangulate the location of the fish bomb and we'll relay those information across to the relevant authorities. So our role is to provide information for enforcement, for action. So, so I'm gonna, there's a little audio clip here that we're gonna play. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a process of a diver going into, uh, going through dive. So uh, you hear a dive instructor talking to the divers, how to go, uh, starting a dive and we'll pick up from there. Right. Okay guys, it's time to jump in. Has everyone done their buddy checks? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, great. Well, the visibility is looking pretty decent, so if we all stay together, we should have a good dive. Let's go. So that's, at the end there, that's the sound of a fish bomb. That's how it sounds like underwater. Obviously, you, if you're underwater, you can feel the shock wave also at the same time. So I can duplicate that here, but I can just try and duplicate the, the audio of a sound of a fish bomb. That's the sound of a fish bomb underwater. Next, next slide. So, after a fish bomb has uh, been detonated, you can see that this is a crater that's been created underwater. This, is, uh, this image is off Samporna. This is probably about a day, two days after a fish bomb have occurred. Next, uh, next. And, and this is part of the remnants of uh, that fish after a fish bomb. This is immediately about less than an hour after a fish bomb. Next, next. So we do have uh, people that have a uh, fish bomber. They have injury. So you can see that he lost his, um, his right arm, right limb. So this is from fish bombing. So the story of this gentleman is that he was fish bombing and the bomb accidentally exploded in his hand. He's lucky to survive because there were nearby boats that picked him up. If not, he would have drowned. So what is our, what I'm trying to, we, we, what we're trying to show is that what we have the technology and how we use the technology to use to try to detail fish bomb. Just go next and next. Yeah, we will, uh, there's always a threat to food security, the technology. Uh, we also look at refining the, the technology and hardware, working with enforcement, uh, local engagements, and what's the outcome for our, our effort. So food security here, it, it literally means that it is a nutrient that you, you take from the source of food that you, are, that you are accustomed to. So in this context, in marine, it's marine protein. So this is where most of the fishermen or sea community Main source, uh, main source of protein is from the sea. So by fish bombing, they're actually bombing away their source of uh, marine protein, which is going to be a threat for future uh, generation in terms of food security. So we're going to talk a little bit about technology. Uh, so I said just now explain a little bit about the hydrophones. So on this side here, this is uh, this is what the what we, we generate the uh, the uh, the graph or the audio wave from a fish bomb. As you can see, this one here is pretty much very I mean really large or very big in size because it's only 160 meters from the bomb. So this is literally next to the hydrophone. And this one here is 1.7 kilometers, and you can see that it's smaller. Six kilometer, also much smaller 
as further away the, the waveform becomes smaller and smaller. But what is very unique here is the last one here. It's also at 6 km and you notice that the waveform is quite similar but there is some difference. The difference here is that we can tell this is in shallow water and this is in deep water. In shallow water means there is one, two, three, three bubble bursts. That means this is a reflection of the sound wave hitting the surface of the sea and the surface of the, of the ocean. So it creates this bubble and this is very unique to fish bombing. Uh, this is what we call bubble burst. So how the technology triangulates? So each one of these lines or colors here represent a, a different hydrophone that listens or pick up the fish bomb. So this is all in microseconds. So once it picks up the, the audio of a fish bomb, it will draw a, a, a hyperbola, a line that says, okay, it's somewhere around this area, but it doesn't know where a single hydrophone. The second hydrophone also says that it's somewhere around here. And while, and all of those lines, once they intersect, that's where the, where the point of the fish bomb is. So that's how the technology works. So there's a little bit, there's some very smart uh, algorithm behind the software, but this is in general how it works. So we're also looking at refining the technology. Uh, at the moment, we are only at this phase one. By the way, a little bit of background of the technology. The technology was actually used for gunshot detection in the US by, uh, from a company called Shot Spotter. Uh, now they, are, they only have rebrand themselves to call Sound Thinking. So they have microphones, you tell hydrophone, they have microphones up on buildings listening to gunshot. So every time a gunshot is fired, it will then trigger and, uh, and triangulate the location for the local enforcement, the police to react. The reason for this is there is value in saving somebody's life. Sadly, the value of saving our marine life is not that high on that list yet. So we're getting there. And also the other concept of uh, the gunshot detection is because the, the belief is that if somebody got shot, normally he or she cannot call for help. So this is a system that is put in place so that you can help. The, the, the victim that's from a gunshot. So we are also looking at radar. I'll explain more again radar. We call smart radar. The smart radar, the function here is when a fish bomb is detected, we will give the GPS location to the radar and the radar will sweep the location where the fish bomb has occurred. And it is smart enough to track a boat. If there's a boat there, it will track the boat's movement. See, one of the challenge from our local uh, enforcement and our communities and whoever's uh, out there trying to enforce this is that the fish bombers are very smart. They're not going to wait there for you. If the fish bomb, they see a boat comes, they'll move away. So using a, a radar, we can track their movement and we, at least we know where they're going and we can intercept them. Either we intercept them or we can uh, keep the information for further action future action. We're also just looking at drone. Drone here is purely for the purpose of evidence gathering. Same thing also, a GPS location will be sent to the drone and the drone will fly to the site where the fish bomber is and take live picture and video. And this is all for record purposes for future action. And once we have all of this together, we'll then we'll put it into an app. So we have a couple of students here. This is the future. So we are developing all of this and if you all have any in the future they're looking into AI development, software writing and so on, this is what we're looking at in the future. So I was talk as I was saying just now the radar. So the radar also has a camera. Not not the best camera around, but it does get some image. This is a live image from the radar. And this is where it tracks. So these are all these are tracking. Of, of a boat that has been, that was de detected for fish bombing. So we now know it's moving north, away from the radar. It's actually moving away from Sampona. So this guy, very, is, there is a possibility it's going up to the Philippines. This is the drone, this is the future of drones. This is one of the new BGI drone out in, in, in the market. So it ha it's a docking system. It flies autonomously, everything is pre-programmed and it flies and it comes back and charge inside this docking system. This is two years ago, last two months, there is a newer one, much more compact, 30% smaller and lighter and fly further. So hopefully we will, we have some funds and we can we start move, uh, developing this. The, the, this older one is about 50,000 US dollars. Five zero. Five zero, yeah. The newer one, the newer one, I think is 30% less. So it's probably about 40,000. So this is what we do. So when we, when the sensors pick up a fish bomb, it will generate what we call an incident and we give a date time and a longitude latitude uh, location of the fish bomb, triangulation. So we will send this across to the Marine Police, for example. 
we'll send it across to them. Uh, if they have a boat or if they have a personnel in their area, they will send the person out immediately. And if the individual does not have a GPS or doesn't know how to read long latitude GPS, we also send them a Google map. It's number one here is where the location of the fish bomb. We send them this all this location. We also send them the audio file, the sound of a fish bomb that you heard just now. We send them an audio file. We give them all this information for them to respond. And this is the outcome. So they caught two guys on a boat, small little boat. There's two engine, fish, a compressor for, for diving. And these are the fish, uh, fish bomb apparatus. Uh, you can see that there's uh, one, there's two single one and two double one. Uh, this matchstick here, yes, it's matchstick, but this little box here, that's where the detonator is, fuse and detonator inside. So all of this, and this is our glass bottles. In the old days, in the old days, I mean, we used to, we used to have those uh, Guinness stout, stubby Guinness stout bottle, the stubby one, the shorter one, not the long bottle. Those are the ones that they use. But now, they don't have that. They use any bottles, and any bottles they can get. They even use plastic bottles now. They even use plastic bottles. This particular bottle, anybody want to get, make a guess what, what bottle is this? It's actually from our, from the supermarket. Sunquick Cordial Juice Bottle. Uh, the sun quick, the little, co the little thick cordial. Uh, yeah. Why? Why sun quick? The glass is super hard, so the shock wave is much stronger. So that's why they choose this bottle. So boycott? <laughs> no, 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 no. We don't boycott. So we also engage. We do a lot of engagement with the local communities. Also, we go out in the sea. We, we see boats out there fishing. Uh, we go out to them. We go and talk to them. We we spend a lot of time engaging with them. Uh, we get to know them. Uh, we we, we want to understand, they want, we want to become their friends they, and to understand what are their challenges and how we could help them. In fact, not all of them are fish bomber. It's only a small number of fish bombers. And because of that small number, people like this, like them, are the ones suffering because of the destruction and the, uh, and the total wipeout of the marine life that is supposed to be supporting them. So we go and engage with them, we gather intelligence, we talk to them. Uh, do you know who's a fish bomber? And normally they don't tell us, but they will say, oh, si siapa siapa, di sana sana. So we have to use our own judgment to say, okay, this are area where the fish bombers are. And we will then engage with them. We, we actually engage directly with the fish bomber. We, ne we go to them and tell them, we have sensors in the water, if you fish bomb, we can catch you. So please don't do it. That's our message to them. Our goal here is not to catch them and put them in prison. It's because it doesn't solve anything. It creates more problems. Yeah. But we engage with them. We tell them not to do it. But we, as we know, being human, there will always be some that will never listen. Now, the beauty of our data is that we have the location. Because it's real time. We know where the fish bomb has happened. And we know where the reefs are damaged. We can actually rescue the bomb reef before it becomes rubble. Before this, we don't have the ability or capability to have the location of the fish bomb, fish bomb site. But now we have. So we are pushing this with a lot of other local NGOs in Sampona. Like for example, people from Reef Check, people from WWF, people from Green Sampona. We're talking to them. Uh, we tell them, okay, this is the area that has been bombed. Can you go there as soon as possible? and they can pick up uh, fragments of coral. Uh, when a fish bomb has, uh, uh, has occurred, when, a lot of, when the coral are fragmented, not all of them are dead. They're actually some of them, most of them are actually alive. They only die because there's no substrate for them to attach themselves on, and they start to roll around in the, in the sea bottom and they die. But if we could pick them up and create nurseries like this, there's a very high possibility that we can rescue those corals. We can save those corals before they become rubble. So this is one of the things that instead of using the technology to stop fish bombing, we can also do rescue work. There's a multiple effort that we could, uh, that we could do. These are all some of the rescue coral that have been replanted. Some, some are not rescue, some are actually from previous bomb, they are, they are rubbles and they pick it up and they try to rescue them also. You see, it, it, there's a strong movement behind uh, coral restoration. Uh, replanting coral especially. When we rescue coral and we want to regenerate coral, we also need to be mindful the species of coral we rescue. And sometimes we might be rescuing coral or trying to replant coral that might be invasive to an area. So we, they need to be a little bit more studied, put in place as to what species of coral we're going to focus on or we don't only focus on one species or we need to be more diverse in the species of coral that we're gonna rebuild and rescue. Yes, there is a lot of movement, but at the same time, we need to be mindful what we're doing might be also harmful in the future. So we also use uh, underwater drone 
these are all our tech stuff because uh, this saves our time from diving so we just put the drone in we just run it sometimes we just want to see how badly damaged is that reef is it damaged or how what type of condition of the rubble is it then we can do our gen take some pictures and we generate the report and then we and we talk to the other other NGOs WWF reef check and so on okay go. guys look this is how bad the, the, the dead reef is from from fish bomb there's a high chance of uh, that you could rescue a lot of the fragment you guys try to organize a trip out there as soon as possible yeah so this is some of the some of the uh, outcome this is about uh, four five months where an area where we monitor as you can see that uh, it, they are a lot of fish bomb detected but at the same time the numbers drop dramatically from 130 to 33 went up a little bit and dropped again so what this means is that this the equipment or the sensors that we have in place working with the lo uh, uh, local authorities working with the communities we're able to combat this fish bomb issue this is there's a drop by about eight to seventy percent at least so but the sensor itself it's not enough it's a combination of working with the community and working with the enforcement without the other two elements we it just numbers only we're generating all right thank you and then i think there's a quote in the sylvia yeah this is a little quote from sylvia earl i don't know if you you heard of her she's uh she's one of the pioneer marine biologists ex uh, marine explorer so she, she did once say to us that fish bombing is bombing our future. All right, thank you very much. That's my presentation. Thank you. Any, any question? Anthea. Yeah, just please. What, what sort of opportunities are available to the fish bombers if they give up fish bombing? Okay, uh, I think we need to take one step back on, on, on that. Uh, we have to understand uh, why they're fish bombing. And at the same time also, what category of a fish bomber are they? It's interesting. Yes. So based on, based on our study and our engagement with the community, we, we classify them as three groups of fish bomber. The first group are what we call the curious guy. People that want to, let's try a fish bomb and see how much fish we catch. This is one group. And we do, we do get a lot of them on and off. And we do get the second group, which are people that are desperate. They have fixed six, seven children at home. They need to feed the family and they'll just throw a bomb and get whatever they can and feed the family. Or, and if there's extra, they'll buy some food, some food for the family. And the third one, which is the most destructive, are the commercial guys. These, these are the guys that go on a 30, 40 footer wooden boat and they will have five, six outriggers with them. And they go out to all the remote uh, reefs and the outrigger will go out and they will blast the whole reef for anything they can grab. And then when they collect all the fish, they will process it immediately on the boat, become dry fish. Before it becomes dry fish, they will cut it, gut it, and they put it into salt, salt brine. And, they'll leave, and that's how, and after that, then they'll dry it. So it's very difficult to try, try to deal with this issue because once they've got the fish, you, want, you can't tell is it a bomb fish, a, a net fish, or, or a lion fish, or whichever. So there's a, it's quite a bit of challenge. So to, to answer your question, we, we are trying our best to create the stick, which is what the sensor is. It's the stick. You don't go fish bomb, you fish bomb, we know where you are, where you do it. But at the same time, we also engage with them and say, tell us what you need, uh, how can we help you? Uh, instead of us offering them, okay, you should now, you should do fish farming, you should do seaweed farming, you should go uh, uh, shell culturing, you should uh, rare crabs and so on. Instead of doing that, we reverse the whole process that they should tell us what they want. Because they are the one that knows what they can do best. We, are, we don't know what they can do. We don't know what are their expertise are. Uh, we don't know what are their challenges are. So it's best for them to tell us. So we, we are doing the reverse process of a lot of the uh, government agencies are doing where they send uh, a team to study and write a report and then they recommend this is what you need to do for them. But it's not that it's not useful, it's very useful but we prefer to do the other way around and we'll try a different method and see how it comes out. We are also looking at creating a circular economy with plastic. There's so much plastic out in the sea. So we are hoping that in the next pilot project will hopefully start before end of this year. We will engage some local communities, they, island communities, they will pick up the plastic, we will process the plastic, any kind of plastic, huh? we're not talking about particular type, of, this all seven type of plastic. It has to be semi-dry, it doesn't have to be dry dry, it has to be semi-dry. And then we can process it into, the plastic will become, you know what's an aggregate? Aggregate is like those stones out there. The stones, the aggregate. And this, we, we use this as construction, construction material. 
and we will use this to rebuild reef that is damaged. So that's kind of the things that we want to do to try and create that uh, circular economy and help the fish bomber. Any more questions? Yes. Yeah. Okay, once you catch a fish bomber and hand them over to law enforcement, in your opinion, how effective is that law enforcement process? It's very poor. Very poor. Very, very poor. There, is, there are syndicates out there, and I'm, I'm saying this out loud here. There are syndicates out there. Yesterday, in fact, yesterday somebody called me and said, Hey, we caught a fish bomber two days ago, but today he's out there. I can see him out in the boat already. Yes, it's very, it's weak, but the weakness is not from the system. The weakness is from the individual. The person sitting on the chair. That's it. So that's the weakness. So we need to break that. How we break that is the data we generate. When I, when I first started, nobody wants to listen to me. The police doesn't want to listen to me. The fishery department doesn't want to listen to me. They said, no, no, it's, we have all the data. We have everything. We have all the data. I said, okay, so what have you doing? Have you, what have you done? So I said, never mind, I'll continue. We generate the data. We work with the police. We tell the police, okay, this is the fish bomber now. Can you go and catch them? I, I can relate a little story. First fish bomb happened, police go out. They respond immediately, I don't mind you, they respond immediately. They go out with their big blue boat flashing light. If you were a fish bomber, would you be sitting there waiting for the boat, <laughs> boat to come? <laughs> so we engaged with them, we discussed with them, I said, in a nice way, I think you don't need to send your big boat out. You try to send something, another boat out. So they said, okay, we'll send our decoy boat out. Sure enough, that afternoon, they caught two fish bombers. So they are engagement um, and there are ways to engage with them. However, when it comes to fish bomber, there are two categories in terms of how the law is being uh, enacted or how it's been enforced. If a fish bomber is caught with only the fish, it goes to the fishery department. That's where it becomes murder. But if they are caught with any fish bombing apparatus, like any of those in the picture in the bottle, it becomes a police case and automatically non-compoundable. It will go straight. They will go into a whole process of interrogation. So there's two process here. So it depends if it's, that's why the police wants to be caught with the fish bomb apparatus. If only fish only, they'll pass it away. Yeah. If they have not, they're not, they're not interested. If no more, he's still around. Yeah. Thank you so much, Terence. Oh,